Hi, this is Michael Tillinger. Hi, this is Michael Tillinger, and we need to discuss a critical subject here. A subject so vast and so big that it completely boggles the mind how this could have happened, taken place right under our noses, in full view of all global media, all the people, all the researchers of the world, all the financial institutions, the bankers, the accountants, the presidents, the leaders of the world, the biggest event in global finance in the past 270 years. In the last few days or the last two weeks of March 2020, Donald J. Trump, the President of the United States, successfully took control of the Federal Reserve Bank of the USA. Now, if you're jumping up and down saying, oh, it's not possible, I've never heard of it, it wasn't reported on, you'd be quite right. It was not reported on. Why was it not reported on? Because the same people that own the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States own all the other news media and they would certainly not go out there with a big fanfare and, and news to say oh the central bank of the united states has just been taken over or nationalized by donald j trump so very few scant articles made it that donald trump brought the fed into the treasury department of the united states and that's news that was put out but it's much much bigger than that the biggest central bank on earth the reserve the federal reserve bank of the united states is now out of the hands of the rothschild family it is in full control uh, under donald trump and is new to ic to run the fed for the united states larry fink and what it does it presents the whole world with an incredible opportunity to do the same every president every leader of the world can do the same to bring your central bank into the treasury department of your country and simply say thank you very much we know what to do from here it's important to realize that those who control the flow of money and those who control the printing the creation of money not those who have money that's got nothing to do with it there are many rich people around the world incredibly wealthy people but they're not in control of the money it's those who are in control of the money that run the world with their secret organizations and so much more happening behind the scenes that ordinary people have no bloody idea about. But so if you start following the money and you recognize, realize who controls the money, who's got the absolute right to print and distribute and create money out of thin air, then we realize where all the problems in the world are. And it's very difficult to figure out exactly when it happened because the media only responded a while later i managed to find an interview that was done between jerome powell the uh, current uh, chairman of the fed the federal reserve bank of the united states where he clearly states that donald trump now has full control of the fed and could, can do pretty much anything he wants what am i talking about i'm talking about something that has not happened since the mayor amschel rothschild banking empire was launched in seven in the 1760s and when the rothschild empire basically exploded into the world where he sent out his brothers and everybody and they the whole family went around europe and they set up their banks in london paris frankfurt vienna and naples those are the first original rothschild banks and from there they started to control the world and over the next hundred years they pretty much took control of the world and they do that today more so than ever before well since the establishment of the Rothschild banking empire that runs the world today. Many have tried, many countries, many presidents, many leaders, many individuals, many corporations have tried to topple and escape the Rothschild banking empire slavery system, because that's what it is. They capture all countries, all the leaders into their global financial systems and entrap them and enslave them. You cannot escape it because they put in their puppet master leaders and they put in their puppet master armies and so forth. And they control countries, presidents, leaders and anyone that stands up to to confront them or to challenge them. They're removed since six, seven, the 1760s. This family and the banking, the banking families of the world have tortured, abducted, um, silenced, bribed, and murdered anyone that stands up against them. Let me make this very, very clear. 
if you're in the financial industry, whether you're a banker, whether you're the CEO of a bank, whether you're a, a head of a financial institution, an accounting firm, you have no idea how the money system works unless you've gone and studied it. The problem we face is that most of us suffer from cognitive dissonance. And that cognitive dissonance prevents us from believing or digesting information that we get about the origins of money, how it's made, how it's controlled, who creates it, and how it runs the world. When you share information like this, you always get a lot of resistance, and mostly from people who don't really know. They think they know, but they don't know. The obstacles to receiving this kind of information are many, and most of them are really our own personal problems, and it's associated with intelligence. Very smart people think that they're too smart for the world to be pulled over their eyes, and they think they know how the world works. They think they know the money markets, especially people that work in the finance industry and, 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 and investments and banking and accountants, and they all come from the same um, education. They all come from the same accounting and banking education, that the same lies and indoctrination has been programmed into the people that run and manage the financial institutions. So obviously, their sense of reality is what they were told. That's, those are the rules what they work with, and that's what they understand. So they can't imagine anything outside of it. They can't imagine that there's another game that's being played, played behind the screen that they're not aware of about the creation and the control and the manipulation of money. They just know what they were taught at university and then the structures and the systems that they were told to implement when they get their first job and then they implement their structures very, very well and they keep getting promoted higher and higher and higher up. And when they're very, very good at implementing the structures and the control systems, they eventually get appointed to be the CEO of a bank. So what I found out is that the CEOs of banks often have no idea and no clue about how banks work, how money is created, where it really comes from, who's in absolute control. And it's mind boggling that that is the case. But once you realize how they've woven the banking families that run the world and the Rothschild banking empire, how they've woven the, the spell into the education system, it's just such a beautiful and easy thing to realize why they could succeed. So intelligence and education is often a problem because we think that I've been educated, I've got this degree or that degree, or I've worked in this and I've worked in that institution, I know how the money markets work. No, you don't until you realize who the people are behind the creation of money, where it comes from and how it was actually inserted into humanity some 6,000 years ago and then fine-tuned some 270 years ago under Mayor Amschel Rothschild. The media obviously plays a very important role because the media is also controlled by the same banking families and every part of media, not all of it obviously, but most of the media, and that's what they use as their main spearhead of propaganda. It's repetition, repetition, repetition. Keep telling us the lie over and over and over again and eventually people begin to believe the lies. Well, the entire global financial scheme is controlled by a small group of people, a very small number of people. It is a business. It's a global business that controls the world. Do you th really think for one second that a global business of this size would not be controlled? You've lost your mind if you think like that. It is the most controlled business on earth because it controls all the other businesses on earth. Okay, so let's backtrack here. Since the launch of the Rothschild banking empire that has grown into what we know as the financial industry today, no one has been able to topple the Rothschild um, grip on humanity. And there have been some very important and very prominent people that have tried and have done very, very well. And uh, they've all been silenced or killed. Uh, President Jackson in the USA uh, was a great example. Several uh, attempts on his life were made. And then obviously President Lincoln, who challenged the, the whole uh, banking industry, challenged the central banks in the USA with these greenbacks and uh, made America uh, basically a debt-free country. Then we have obviously Archduke Ferdinand, Franz Ferdinand um, from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, who was assassinated in Sarajevo, which sparked the First World War. Um, we have uh, Tsar Nikolai, Tsar Nikolai Romanov, who was taken out. Uh, because he opposed the banking empire of uh, of Europe, and they took over Russia, um, and it was that whole Zionist uh, banking Bolshevik plot that I fear is now invading the United States. Um, 
and also uh, we have Hendrik Verwoerd, South Africa's Hendrik Verwoerd, who was murdered under the guise of apartheid. It had nothing to do with apartheid. Hendrik Verwoerd wanted to do what JFK did just three years before him in 1963 when JFK started to print the United States notes. He did pretty much very, very much the same to what Donald Trump did, except he didn't have the support. He, he was all alone. Can you imagine how JFK must have felt when he started to print the United States notes? He couldn't talk to the media. He couldn't get his message out to the people because the media is controlled by the people that run the Fed. He's just stolen the Fed from the banking families that own the media and all the propaganda of the world. There's no way he could share his knowledge and information with the people. So very quickly, they just took him out and the Fed took back the money, the control of the money and everything went back to normal. But JFK came very, very close. But this, the time wasn't right. The international media, the network that we have today, the social media, the internet is a far more conducive environment for any leader of a country to be able to do such a thing. Because the moment you do it, the entire global propaganda machine through the mainstream media will come down on you like a, an unimaginable pack of terriers and they will rip you apart. And that's pretty much what's happening in the USA right now. So just so that you understand, the banking industry is not a noble business. It is the largest organized crime syndicate on earth. It is the biggest and the most powerful organized crime syndicate because they control the making, the creation of money and the distribution of money around the world everywhere. And they have held that control as firmly as they possibly can. When I say that banking is not a noble industry, I'm not talking about the people that work in the banks or middle management or even top management. Those people have just got jobs. They've got families. They've got jobs. They've got no idea what the bank does, how it operates. They're just happy to have a job, get a salary at the end of the month, take care of the family and get on with life as a slave to the bank, month in, month out, year in, year end. It is unbelievable how the the banking industries that have enslaved us use the people as their slaves to prop up and keep their slave master industries going. So if you still think that banking and money is a noble industry, change your mind immediately. And this is how we can get ourselves out of it. Knowledge is power. If you know this, and once you know this, it's very easy to recognize what we have to do to get out of it. I'm going to throw in this here, the one small town strategy with the Ubuntu movement has all the solutions for this problem. We can get out of this problem in literally in the blink of an eye. All we need is more people to recognize how powerful the one small town strategy is, and we can start moving on this very, very quickly. So let's come back to Donald Trump and what he did. Donald Trump, Donald J. Trump, the president of the United States right now, was the first individual that managed to outsmart the bankers. He did it quietly, stealthily, and without any fanfare or global news or reporting on it, he took over and basically nationalized the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States. Now, I know that there are going to be a lot of people jumping up and down. Oh, he didn't do this. He didn't do that. And all I'm going to tell you is that if you still think that, then you have no idea how the central banks of the world work who controls them, how they operate, and you need to go away and go back to the drawing board, go back to class and learn about this. Because if you don't realize what has happened here, then you've missed the point. Now, the question is, why has this gone unannounced? Why have the media not reported on this? This is a huge thing that for 270 years, the world has been fighting the Rothschild banking empire to get out of that, that slavery grip. It's because the mainstream media are also owned by the same people that own the Federal Reserve Bank. So how did Donald Trump manage to do that? Very easily. The central banks of the countries are generally protected by the armies of that country, the army, the military, the police. And they are the ones that normally protect the draconian slave masters, the central bank, until you get a president that realizes what's going on and he takes over that central bank because he can because he controls the army and the army is not going to go against him because he controls the army donald trump is the president of the usa he controls the army the military uh, the police and etc and especially now under the state of emergency he's got pretty much complete control of the usa so donald trump simply brought the federal reserve bank into the treasury department 
and nobody realized what was happening. It was such a slick and subtle move. He didn't close it or annex it or say, oh, you're a bunch of bad guys. We don't want to work with you. No, not at all. He just said, we are bringing the Fed into the Treasury Department because we need to work closer with the Fed. From that moment on, he, by de facto, became the head of the Fed. Then he did the next most incredible move, and he appointed as his 2IC, or the guy to look after the Fed, now under the, the umbrella of the United States Treasury Department, that one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful and influential person in the world, by the name of Larry Fink. Larry Fink runs a company called BlackRock. BlackRock is, I guess you can say, the largest company on earth. They have probably way more than $20 trillion under management. Larry Fink is the CEO of this company and a close friend of Donald J. Trump. They've been working together since the 80s, I believe, already. And uh, so the most powerful individual in business and money and finance and stock exchange and market stock markets, Larry Fink, is now Donald Trump's 2IC, managing the activities of the Fed. You cannot have a more powerful combination than that. What Donald Trump has done, literally, is unimaginable. And the reason why this has gone unreported by the mainstream media is because the mainstream media are also owned by the same people that own the Federal Reserve Bank, the banking families, the Rothschild Empire. They own all the central banks of the world. The Fed, the Bank of England, the South African Reserve Bank, Bank of Australia, Bank of India, all the central banks of the world are controlled by this global banking empire family group. Normally, the central banks are protected by the armies and the police force of all the countries until you get a president that realizes what's going on and he takes over that central bank because he can, because he controls the army and the army is not going to go against him because he controls the army. Keep in mind that for the past 50 or 60 years, the United States military and army and the might of the USA military machine was used as the watchdog to go and protect the interests of the Rothschild Empire and all the countries of the world. So wherever there was a rogue or a potentially rogue leader or president that didn't want to play ball with the Rothschild Empire and their banking system, they would use the United States military, the might of the USA military, to go and invade and topple that regime. It had nothing to do with a threat to the USA or anything like that. It had always uh, related to the threat to the Rothschild banking empire because that particular leader or government did not really want to play ball with their central bank plan of action and the control of that country. And right now, since Donald Trump has taken over, this is no longer the case because now we have a president in the United States that has resisted the control of the Rothschild empire by taking over the Federal Reserve Bank. The Rothschild Empire doesn't have armies. They don't have armies or military. They use the armies and the military of the individual governments to protect their interests. That has suddenly changed. So this opens the door to leaders all over the world to do the same, to bring in the central bank into the government, knowing that you're not going to be invaded by the United States to topple your government because you're not playing ball with the Rothschilds, as this has been the case for so many decades now. So clearly this is an invitation from and through via the actions of what Donald Trump has done by taking over the Federal Reserve Bank for all other leaders of the world to do the same, to bring in the central bank into the government and cut off the control of the Rothschild empire in your country. So what Donald Trump has done, very cleverly shown every leader of every country in the world how to escape the draconian slavery system imposed on your country and on your government and your leadership, your presidency, your prime minister, whatever it is. All the leaders of all the countries can do the same. Do what Donald Trump did. Make sure you got your support of your armed forces and then simply make a statement. We are bringing our central bank into the treasury department of our government and from now on you can control all the dis distribution and the printing and the creation of money for all the things you need. 
and then do the next thing, the same that Donald Trump did. Invite BlackRock, the most powerful company in the world, to come and help you manage this so that you don't come under attack. So now you've got the president, the leader, bringing in, taking control of the central bank, and you've got BlackRock standing by you to make sure that you manage it properly, that, that, the market, that you don't crash the markets and you don't cause trouble because, keep in mind, the global markets are controlled by the banking families from the city of London. That's where they control the markets. The markets aren't just an accident that happens on their own, right? It's a free economy. No, don't even think that for one second. The markets are completely and utterly controlled by the very high up accountants that work for the, the banking families from the city of London. And that's where they play a global game with all the markets around the world. It's a big chess game, so they can manipulate currencies, they can destroy countries, they can do what they want by manip manipulating the markets around the world. And that all happens from the city of London. So if you are a conscious president or a conscious leader of a country, but you are under pressure from all the um, different bodies and instruments and agents of the banking families, whether it's the United Nations, the World Health Organization, the World Bank and all these guys that control and basically extort your country and your people. You know what to do. It's very simple. Do what Donald Trump did. If just 10 countries around the world uh, brought in, I don't want to use the word nationalized because that's actually could be misinterpreted. It has, you know, uh, stigma of communism to it and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not really nationalization. It's just really saying we'll take, take control of... Uh, of creating our own money and managing our own money. We don't need a private company to do that. So literally, if 10 leaders of 10 countries can do this, um, I reckon that would pretty much break the stranglehold of the Rothschild banking empire. The biggest central bank on earth, the Reserve, the Federal Reserve Bank of the United States, is now out of the hands of the Rothschild family. It is in full control uh, under Donald Trump and his new 2IC to run the Fed for the United States, Larry Fink. And to end this presentation on a really interesting note, in January 2018, the chief executive of BlackRock, Larry Fink, made a very interesting statement. Now keep in mind, Larry Fink is now the guy in charge of the Federal Reserve funds and money and, the and, and whatever the Federal Reserve job is going to be in the United States under the presidency of Donald Trump. This is what Larry Fink had to say to the world and the people that they work with. He said, contribute to society or risk losing our support. Contribute to society or risk losing our support. Isn't that a very nice message to receive from the most powerful person in global finance rather than messages of taxes, cuts, more stringent um, restrictions on humanity and so forth? Isn't that a lovely message? to send to the people of the world, contribute to society or risk losing our support. I think we have some very interesting times ahead with Donald J. Trump taking over the Fed and his main guy looking after it, Larry Fink, with that kind of attitude towards humanity. Every country can do that. Let's use this opportunity. Do what Donald Trump did. We can start a whole new world. Come out of the coronavirus insanity, the madness, and create a brand new world. And once we inject the one small town strategy, one small town can change the world strategy, where we create small, beautiful communities that cooperate and collaborate on all the things they do to create prosperity and abundance, as opposed to compete against each other and destroy each other and destroy each other's lives, businesses and families, rip their towns apart. Everything becomes possible. Please watch the One Small Town videos. Go to ubuntuplanet.org and there are many videos there for you.